Oh, I can cook too. On top of the rest, my seafood's the best in town. Yes, I can cook too. My fish can't be beat. My sugar swings around. Oh, I'm a gal's ideal of a perfect meal, right down to the demi I'm part of joy for a hungry boy, baby. I'm cooking with gas. Oh, I'm a gum drop, a sweet lollipop, a brook right out of the brook. And what's more, baby, I can cook. Oh, yeah. Hi, good morning. My name is Trevor Dubham. I'm here with PKRG TV. I'm here with actually Howard Fredericks, and uh, he's going to show us. He's a pepper man today. He's going to actually show us his garden. He's going to show us how to make amazing pepper sauce. And we're really excited, you know, to actually hear what he's got to say. So, Howard, if you can just kind of maybe just kind of um, welcome to the show, first of all. Thank I know you, you're Trevor. normally behind the camera, but yes. it's great to have you in front of the camera today. Um, and you're going to show us this amazing array of peppers that you've amassed. Um, you know, so I'm really excited to hear uh, exactly what you have here. So if you can, you know, kind of walk sure. us through. Of course, Trevor. It's my pleasure to be here today, and uh, I apologize for the slightly disheveled look of our peppers today, but we've just had a bit of a rainstorm that made things kind of fall over a bit. We've propped them up as best as we can. Did a good job. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to my wife, Lori, who helped out with that as well. Thank you, Lori. Um, <laughs> so today, um, we have an assortment of peppers that we've been growing, and each year we try a couple of new peppers, new for us, um, and uh, we're sometimes limited a bit by what is available locally to purchase to begin growing our pepper garden. Um, this year, we are fortunate that we have a lovely collection of habanero peppers. Habanero peppers, which are right here, are amongst the hottest peppers that you can possibly have. Wow. Um, uh, they're certainly hotter than jalapeno peppers and hotter than serrano peppers, which are also popular uh, chili peppers. The habanero peppers usually start out green and then they begin changing color and become a beautiful orangey red color. And some of our habaneros are still green and some of them have already changed to a lovely orange color. Orange is an excellent stage to pick them at. That's pretty much at their peak. Mm -hmm. um, habanero peppers have a lovely flavor even when they're green. They're not quite as hot when they're green as they are when they're orange. So the more orange, the hotter, the hotter they, they get. Okay. Uh, but the flavor is a lovely smoky sort of flavor and they're wonderful for making salsas um, or cooking uh, with chicken or other delicious dishes. Wow. So today I'm going to go ahead and harvest a habanero pepper. Awesome. And I'm going to harvest an orange pepper right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pinch off the pepper. Rather than cutting it, it's much healthier for the plant. And you can see we have beautiful. a beautiful orange colored pepper. So Howard, you know, how did you first hear or when did you first hear of, of this type of pepper, the habanero? Well, um, I used to live in Texas. I did my graduate work at the University of Texas in Austin and I spent about 10 years living in Texas, in Austin and Bryan College Station area. And during that time, there was a wonderful community garden um, facility that anybody could rent a small plot in. So I rented a plot and decided that it would be a good time to learn how to grow various kinds of hot peppers. Nice. So that's when I first began discovering different types of peppers. And I, I, in fact, did grow habanero peppers at the time, as well as serranos and jalapeno peppers. But there are some other special peppers that we're going to see today that I didn't know anything about and that I've only learned about in the last year or two. Um, some particularly rare and unusual peppers that you'll see shortly. Nice, nice. So I've harvested one lovely um, habanero pepper. Want to hold this for you? Sure. Oh, can, you can. And we're going to move across here now and take a look at some other peppers that we have here. Um, this is what's known as a giant jalapeno pepper. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much that the fruits are that giant, although they're pretty large. 
but the plant itself is larger than a normal sized jalapeno plant, which usually tends to be more like two feet tall, and this is, tends to be four feet, five feet tall when it's at its peak. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest um, one of these giant jalapeno peppers, and we're going to move across here. This is a very special pepper. We're not going to actually harvest this today. It's a little hard to see, but we're going to try to expose it a little bit more. This is a chili ancho poblano pepper. Wow. And it's quite a big, fat, and delicious pepper, but it's actually not hot. This is a, a wonderful, smoky flavored pepper that is popular in making chili rellenos, which is a stuffed chili, normally stuffed with cheese and then batter dipped and fried. So we have one that's ready to go, but we're not going to make that today. We're going to let a couple more of them mature and we're going to make a meal of those. Right, so this is mild. This it's is a mild very mild nice. chili, very mild. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving along, we have a small chili red pepper, just a regular chili red. Um, some people consider this to be sort of a Thai pepper. Um, it's a pretty hot pepper, not exceedingly hot, but pretty hot. And it's good for making stir fries. Um, again, it starts out green, but then as they mature, you'll see that one of them is beginning to turn red here. And the redder it gets, the hotter it gets. So this actually reminds me of a pepper in the Caribbean where I'm from mm -hmm. called Weary Weary. It's called Weary Weary pepper. So it's actually a pepper that was really popular with the Amerindian culture, mm -hmm. very hot. And uh, it looks, it actually looks similar, but mm -hmm. that pepper is a little smaller. So yes. I can just imagine, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. awesome. Moving on a little bit further down is a very weird and unusual pepper, but it looks kind of like a familiar pepper, which is, this one is the Cajun bell pepper. B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Cajun bell. So like bell as in beautiful. That's the French word for beautiful. The Cajun bell peppers, um, start out again green and eventually turn fiery red. And you see we have one small, or two actually, small red ones here. Mm -hmm. And those are ready to harvest. But we're not actually going to use them. Well, actually, that's not true. Maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and harvest yeah, maybe one of the one. red ones. Right, good. Just the small red one here. Then I pinch it off rather than cutting it. It's healthier for the plant. Grows back better. We're going to go ahead and use that for our salsa today. Just make so that, cool. add that to the salsa. Okay, now, moving along, we have a really special, and this pepper is almost dangerous, or I should oh. say it's actually dangerous. Uh, so we touch it? Uh, we can touch it, but you want to be careful afterwards not to touch your eyes. You want to wash your okay, hands thanks afterwards for telling and me actually that. touch the pepper fruit. It's quite dangerous. This is a Carolina Reaper pepper. I'll go ahead and pick it up hold it up like this. And you'll see the Carolina Reapers, again, start out green. They're very kind of gnarly looking pepper, but they're actually a hybrid man-made type of pepper. Um, originally derived from the habanero pepper um, as its source and like a hybrid of the habanero and I believe the serrano kind of combined to form this specially extremely hot pepper. The heat of this pepper is 1.5 million Scoville units. Now the Scoville unit is the unit of measurement that's used to um, describe how hot a pepper is. So by comparison, it's about a thousand times hotter than your typical jalapeno pepper. Wow. Okay, so it's extreme. So if you have stomach problems, this is not the pepper yes. for you. This is the second hottest pepper in the world today. Wow. Within the last year, one additional pepper called Dragon's Breath took over as the hottest pepper in the world. That's 2.5 million Scoville Incredible. units. Incredible. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and harvest this fiery red Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper. Wow. 
And we're going to pop that in here. So this is man-made now, right? Well, it, it, was a it kind of, yes. It wasn't, it didn't, isn't naturally occurring. A lot of the really super hot peppers that we see today um, were kind of attempts to breed peppers for various purposes. In fact, what's interesting about the um, dragon's breath pepper is it's actually, they are using it now in medical research mm. because it is so hot that it can actually cause a numbness if you apply it to the skin or any mucous membranes. And so it can actually be used as an anesthetic. Very interesting. So for people who are unable to tolerate traditional uh, drugs, traditional anesthesia, if they need a topical anesthetic, they can use the naturally occurring anesthetic properties of capsaicin, which Excellent. is the active ingredient in all hot peppers. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like okay. that. Moving okay. along, we have our poor little ghost pepper. Now, there's an interesting story about this ghost pepper. Now, now for, before you go for mm -hmm. it, why is it called a ghost pepper? I That's don't an unusual know the name. original reason. But it actually has a different name. Um, I think that its origins are in India. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the boot jokola or sometimes known as the joke pepper as well. I'm not sure of the origins of the term ghost pepper. That would be something worth researching. You know what, I heard that it's possibly called ghost pepper because um, you're not, we're not sure what color it's gonna be. Ah. I don't know how true that is. That's why I asked you. Right. Um, you know, so it may be different colors depending mm -hmm. on, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular pepper, we grew ghost peppers last year very successfully. So we, and we enjoyed making a delicious pepper sauce from them. But unfortunately this year, we weren't able to find any ghost pepper plants locally to purchase. Mm. So we decided to look online to try to find ghost peppers to purchase. And I found a place that sold me a ghost pepper plant, this plant. It arrived in the mail and I was very disappointed because it was very, very small when it arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, wow, this is never never going to mature to the point where it produces fruit during the course of this season. So I phoned up or I emailed the, the fellow who sold it to me and I said, you know, uh, it was a very tiny pepper plant. I'm a little disappointed in it. I just wanted to let you know. So he was so nice. He said, you know, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. We usually send the smaller plants to southern states mm. because there's a longer growing season. There you go. So he said, normally we send the larger plant to places like New Jersey. He says, I no longer have ghost pe pepper plants in stock this year, but I have several other possible plants that I could send you. And one of the plants that he offered to send was a plant that I had never heard of before, and that's what we're gonna see today. It's a very unusual and wow. relatively rare pepper plant. Exciting. It's called the fish pepper plant. Wow. So, so Howard, before you go for it and show us mm -hmm. that fish pepper plant, mm -hmm. just a curious question. Yes, I, know, sure. I know we're here in New Jersey, we're in Park Ridge, and um, a lot of, you know, it's very seasonal. We've had a very warm and wet season, but I'm just curious, are any of these plants, are you able to take them indoors so that they can last, you know, through the winter time? and you can bring them back out you know, in the spring again? Or, no, or these are just, just seasonal? Much seasonal once ah, a year kind okay. of pepper plants. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we buy new plants each year and they die off at the, you know, usually October or mm -hmm. so, they're, they're gone by that time. But they continue to produce fruit usually well into September, October. That's good. So we keep on harvesting till there's no more. Excellent. So I'm coming over to your house with pepper sauce. Yeah, and we freeze <laughs> them too. We freeze peppers so we, so we can save them so that we have peppers over the winter time. Awesome. We can defrost them at any time and put them into a, a sauce good. or a stew or any other kind of recipe where you would use uh, a hot pepper. Great, so you're gonna show us the, uh, the yeah. fish. The, the fish, fish pepper mm -hmm. is a really special and unusual pepper. It nearly died out in the sense that wow. people never saw fish peppers again in the 1940s. So what Look happened is around the turn of the 20th century, this pepper plant emerged as a popular plant in African-American communities, specifically in the mid-Atlantic states in the United States, mostly in around Maryland, Washington, D.C. and Maryland area. Um, the origins of this plant in terms of its uh, relationship to other pepper plants is they believe it's some sort of hybrid between a serrano pepper and possibly a cayenne pepper. However, genetically it has an albino mutation. Mm. So as you can see, there are some of the leaves even that are white to cream colored. So it's kind of a mottled mixture 
of green and white and yellow in the leaves. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then the pepper plants themselves, uh, peppers themselves, the fruits, usually start off kind of cream colored to white in color. And then they begin to develop some green striations on them. So they're kind of like striped Beautiful. mixture between cream colored and green stripes. And eventually they gradually turn bright red. And of course, with all peppers, as they go from white or yellow or cream colored to green to red, they get a little bit hotter. These peppers are about the same hotness as a serrano pepper. Yeah. So they're hotter than a jalapeno, but not as hot as a habanero and nowhere near as hot as the Carolina Reaper or even the ghost pepper. Oh, I meant to say that with this ghost pepper plant, as you can see, you may have wondered, there are no fruits on this this time, right now. Right. Although it's a small plant, we actually did have the beginnings of fruits on it. But alas, some birds came along and decided to eat the embryonic fruits. And so we don't have any new fruits growing yet. There's a couple little buds here and there on it. But I'm not sure if it's going to produce this season. Um, you know, if it does, it'll be very late in the season and they'll probably not get beyond the green st uh, stage of right. growth. So if you want to see it, you got, just got to Google it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so now going back to the fish pepper, um, in terms of what we use fish peppers for, the reason uh, that they're called fish peppers is they were uh, frequently used in seafood dishes, in particular seafood dishes that contain cream sauces. So why would you want to use a pepper like this in a dish that had a cream sauce? Well, one of the reasons is that when it's in its whitish to yellowish cream color, it blends color-wise with the cream sauce. So what it does is it adds a little bit of heat to the sauce without it being visually detectable. So mm -hmm. you don't see the peppers, right. bits of peppers in nice the sauce. And it just gives it a little bit of a kick. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. people will taste a cream sauce and they'll go, wow, where's that heat coming, coming from, from yeah. and it's coming from the fish pepper that gives it the heat but doesn't change the color of the sauce. Now of course these are sort of greenish and start, some of them are starting to turn red so it really wouldn't serve that purpose but you can use them in still in seafood dishes and fish stews. Um, you can use them anywhere you would use a serrano pepper so you could put them in eggs. I used to love to make serrano peppers uh, with scrambled eggs and a little bit of cheese. Nice. Makes a wonderful tasting um, egg dish. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to harvest one of these fish peppers today. And we're just going to try an experiment and mix it in with one of our salsas that we're going to make today and see how it works out. So I just have to choose one. Maybe I'll choose. Oh, here's a fiery red one over here. Nice. Um, I'll go ahead and try one of the fiery red ones since it's ripe and it needs to be picked soon anyway. And we've got that. There you go. Red means power. Excellent. Okay, and last but not least, we have a traditional jalapeno plant, not the giant one. And I'll go ahead and harvest one more jalapeno, which we'll use for our regular salsa. And this is a lovely, beautiful jalapeno fruit. So cool. So I'm, I think these are probably the most popular mm -hmm. of peppers, yes. right? You go to restaurants, Chi Chi's, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. and they tend to use these, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. One thing to keep in mind, it's quite interesting about growing peppers. Um, when you grow peppers, if you grow them in close proximity to one another, they will cross pollinate. So mm. the hottest of your peppers will be made a little bit milder by proximity to less hot varieties of peppers. And likewise, your milder varieties of peppers will become a little hotter than they normally would be go. by proximity. Now, I don't know for sure exactly. Sounds like the birds and the bees to me. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I'm not sure exactly how much proximity we had here. I mean, we kind of grew them a little bit in a slightly different part of our garden here. Um, and some of them were closer to each other than others. And we also moved them around to get different amounts of sunlight. Uh, pepper plants like a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to put grow them in the sunlight and if you actually see them wilting a little bit when they have fruit on it It's a, actually a good thing because it means that they're the fruits going to get a little hotter as uh, you stress the plant a little bit That's awesome. So so I know my in my experience with peppers. It's it's been stuffed peppers, right? That's probably most of your experiences and and you know 
you don't have any stuffed peppers here, peppers that we normally would use for, for stuffing, which Except would tend for to be the Rieno, milder. The uh, Ancho Poblano peppers right. can be stuffed okay. with cheese, but they're not the traditional stuffed bell right. peppers that That's you would right. use with meat or with rice or right. other seasonings. Right, so this is actually the opposite extreme. So it's really exciting to see you know, what Howard is gonna show us today, um, what he's gonna do with these peppers, right? <laughs> so we started with the habanero over here and then you know we went all the way through and I'm gonna ask him again to just you know, raise the peppers up and just kind of by name, because this some of this is an education for mm -hmm. me as well today. I'd never heard of the fish pepper until a few days ago. And um, so, Howard, if you can just kind of show us these peppers sure. and uh, we run through the names again. This is a jalapeno pepper. It is from the giant jalapeno pepper plant, but it is not giant in size of the fruit. It's the plant that's giant. Um, actually, in our case, the giant jalapeno fruit that we had to show there is a slightly smaller fruit than the one from the regular jalapeno plant, which is just a smaller plant, but makes ordinary size, good size jalapeno fruits. Moving along, we have our Cajun bell pepper. This one being the red stage of growth. It's like a miniature bell pepper, but it's a bit spicy, not extremely spicy. And then we have our habanero, nice, beautiful orange yellow color. It means it's nice and ripe and it'll be delicious, flavorful, it's a good one. Um, and quite hot. Um, we have our fish pepper that we just saw. This is the point where it's totally red or almost totally red. And last but not least, our super fiery hot red mm. Carolina Reaper pepper. Scoville unit, 1.5 million. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna be washing my hands thoroughly before I go That's near right. my eyes. That's right. Now we're gonna go inside and prepare some sauces. All right, so join us inside. All right, so, so um, we're back here with my friend Howard, who's actually gonna show us how to make um, hot pepper sauce on the amazing peppers we just pulled. Uh, from his garden. So um, Howard, take it away. Just uh, beautiful ingredients. Just tell us what we're going to do. Okay, Trevor. Um, well, today we're going to make two different types of sauces. The first type of sauce that we're going to make today is a Carolina Reaper pepper sauce. Um, it's a vinegar-based sauce with Carolina Reapers. Um, don't be afraid of the fact that it is a Carolina Reaper, which again is the second hottest pepper on the planet at about 1.5 million Scoville units. That's hot. It's really, really hot. But we're only gonna use one Carolina Reaper um, and we're gonna cool it down a little bit with lots of other ingredients, including carrots, garlic, onion, uh, vinegar, water, mm -hmm. uh, and some seasonings. All right. Okay, so this the looks first great. step of the process is we will cut up the Carolina Reaper. So here's our Carolina Reaper. Cut off the stem part of it. Don't touch your eyes. Yeah, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the seeds from it. Hmm. So now, are you, do you dry these seeds and so you can plant nah. them again, or you just nah. kind of just I'm toss them? Just toss them right. for, for today. Yeah, we buy, uh, mm -hmm. we don't usually grow our plants from seed. Mm -hmm. We grow, we, most of our plants we grow from already started plants. Mm -hmm. So that, because we have a short growing season here in New right. Jersey, we have more likelihood of success if we grow them from plants. Right. Okay, that's good enough. It doesn't have Excellent. to be completely deseeded. All right, so now we have one Carolina Reaper. So I'm gonna cut this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be, you know, super, super fine chopping, but we're gonna cut it up, you know, pretty fine so that, because it's gonna go into a blender once we get it prepared. And I've already cut up some of the other ingredients is one other set of ingredients that we're gonna use that I haven't yet cut up, and that is the um, carrots and the garlic. So we're gonna get those for you. Carrots. So what we can do right off the bat is take this from this cutting board and move straight into the blender here. Okay. This is where it's gonna go. And boy, I can, I can already feel that Carolina Reaper in the air. Wow. It's like getting in that nose already. Just Dude. having it in the air. Okay, weapon grade materials here. Okay, so now we have four carrots. Now normally this recipe calls for 
it's usually, it's basically a variation of my ghost pepper recipe, which calls for four ghost peppers. Uh, sometimes I go with two ghost peppers, but we're only going with one Carolina Reaper, since this is the first time I've ever made anything with a Carolina Reaper pepper, hoping it's not too hot. So we're going to just cut up a few carrots. So it doesn't matter how you cut it up because no, it's, it's, it's all going, uh, into going the in a blender. blender. But it yeah. just makes it a little bit easier for the blender to mm -hmm. completely pulverize it. Right. Because that's what we're going to be aiming for. So we're going to just cut them up a little bit. Okay. And so we cut up the carrots. And the carrots add a nice little bit of sweetness to the sauce as well as toning down some of the heat that we have from the Carolina Reaper pepper. So the idea is that we make this kind of nice sauce, and then what do you do with it? Well, you can pour it on some chicken, if you saute some chicken and add that to it, um, or pretty much anything you'd like. Okay. Or anything that would call for a hot pepper sauce. You could put it in a soup. Mm -hmm. You could pour a little bit of the sauce on eggs. It's wonderful on scrambled eggs. It has a nice heat to that. And it's also got a nice flavor, too, because of the garlic and the carrots and onions that we're going to put into this. So, Howard, so everything, like the quantity that we're going to get, it's like pretty much like a bottle this size? or, or? Yeah, we may end up with a little bit more than that mm -hmm. today from, from all this, based on the size of the carrots and the onion and stuff that I'm using so mm -hmm. but we're gonna aim for like one little bottle of that yeah, um, we cool. may end up with two bottles so I actually okay. have an extra cruet here in case we we need to fill up a second one excellent but we'll just pour it into one for now and then you know yeah so you know I, I love all the natural ingredients um, mm -hmm. for people who you know love plant-based foods I mean this is definitely a, a, you know a great first step but the caveat it is pretty hot so yeah it's a little it'll be a little bit hot. hopefully not too terribly hot okay so now we've got these four carrots cut up mm -hmm. so we've got some garlic here and the recipe calls for five cloves of garlic two so i'm going to use some garlic from save some garlic for my other salsa that i'm going to make mm -hmm. so here's five cloves of garlic and i'm going to go ahead and just put this here for a moment and drop these carrots into the blender so that they're ready to go here. There you go. Okay, awesome. this is a challenge to Careful. do it without actually spilling them all over. I might spill a few, but no big deal. It's just carrots. Okay, one little carrot fell off, not awesome. too bad. We can even pop it in. Great. All right, awesome. All right, so now we'll just cut up the garlic a, a little bit. It doesn't have to be <clears throat> super fine. I can smell the, the, the hotness, slicing of, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. It's like it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's definitely, in the air. especially with the peppers, right? That pepper I is... I mean, the, um, the seeds. Yeah. Well, the seeds are not the hottest part of a pepper. Believe mm. it or not, that's a myth. Mm. The part of the pepper that's the hottest is the inner sort of white fleshy part mm -hmm. um, that's next to the main meat right. fruit of the of the pepper. That's the part of the inner stem, kind yeah, of. Right? Kind yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's really where the hottest part from, of a pepper comes from. So, okay, so we're cutting up all the garlic a little bit. And that's some pretty good so shape cool. now. Great. Excellent. So we'll just drop that right there in here. Go. Okay. Great. Good. And now uh, we've already got a pre-set onion thing that's all cut up. Okay. We can just add that Great. to it. And this I use in this case is a Vidalia onion, which is a sweet onion. So it's um, not a sharp tasting onion. Very nice, mild, delicious onion. Um, so what is it called? Bada Bada Vidalia. Vis Vidalia. Vidalia. Yes, Vidalia. <coughs> okay. And there we go. So. Awesome. All right. Now we have the final sets of ingredients or some, some seasonings. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we need here? Ah, turmeric and white pepper. So we have a little white pepper that we white, add white to this. Pepper. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of dash and a little bit of that, right? <laughs> yeah, there's no specific set quantity. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of ground turmeric. The reason for the turmeric is actually turmeric adds a preservative quality to it, mm -hmm. so the sauce add, lasts a little bit longer than it normally would. Mm -hmm. Nice. In the refrigerator. 
And then we're going to put a little bit of kosher salt in. Not too much, just a little bit. Sprinkle it too. Because really the flavor comes from the pepper and the onions and the carrots. Okay, now, last but not least, uh, we're going to put some cider vinegar, which is a wonderful type of vinegar to use. It's nice and Strong. flavorful, <laughs> tasty. Need some help with that? Nope, good? got it. Okay, good. Just first opening up this cider vinegar and... Wow. Now, if you, if you were here, you can just feel the potency in the air. It's, it's pretty strong. Yep. But so basically two thirds of a cup of vinegar and one third of a cup of water. Okay. So I'm just going to pour in until it says two thirds of a cup. And then I'm going to finish the one cup. So you're pretty good at this. You've been doing this for a pretty long time, huh? Ah, uh, this is, you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years. Okay. Yes, you know, that's great. It's great. Just and of course, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, health benefits, right? To even though these things are hot, it's, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of health benefits for, yes. you know, for, for, um, One of the things you. about uh, hot peppers is that they have a lot of vitamin C. So there's antioxidants there in that. And so it's very good for your immune system. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to begin the process of actually blending the sauce. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna absolutely, totally liquefy this. So that's, that's pretty filled. So uh, you're gonna have to add any more liquid in there or you, I guess at some point you'll, you'll stop it, kind of shake it around a little bit. Yep. Kind of, look at that, see it's rising. That's amazing. And we want to get it nice and ground up so it's as fully chopped up and as liquefied as possible. Nice. And it's just about there. You don't have to worry about blending it too much. You can't blend this too much. Mm. This is my first time having this type of pepper sauce. Okay, I think that's pretty good now. Awesome. So, I think our sauce is nicely blended. Nice. It might still have a few little bits and pieces or chunks of stuff like that, but you know, don't worry too much about that. We're gonna pour the liquid, the whole sauce material, and I've got a nice Hot little stuff. cruet all ready to go. That's gonna, it looks like you're gonna need another bottle there. Yeah, we probably will. I probably made more than I uh Would I just put that over there so it doesn't Yeah, let's, let's put that over the bowl. We're just gonna pour Try this in. Try not to get this in my eyes, right? Uh, yeah, you definitely, definitely don't, don't wanna get, don't this, wanna in get this, this in your eyes. eyes. Although, again, as I said, I don't think this is gonna be extreme in its heat. I think mm -hmm. it's gonna have a little bit of a kick to it, mm -hmm. but it's mostly gonna be a nice, flavorful, vinegary, yeah. So you, you don't, definitely don't want to put this next to your carrot juice in your refrigerator. Yeah. You might you might forget. Okay, so for our purposes, I think that's sufficient mm -hmm. for now. We don't need to actually fill the entire bottle today, and we'll just there we'll just go. make that our, our dispenser for purposes sure. of our. We're going to share the rest of it with the rest our of you. Show, I promise you. And so, then we're going to put a little stopper and top unit on this, and. I believe that we can just slip that on top Love like it. that so that it should pour out a bit. We'll have to probably mm -hmm. wipe that down a little. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, so, it's so good to make things organic because, oh. you know, oh. I just tasted it. It's marvelous, go. but it's, <laughs> it is hot. It is, it is really hot. hot, but it's delicious. Thank you. So I'm gonna need actually some water, I think, okay. uh, with this because, All right, um, so you know. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna have a little bit of chips and we're going to just taste a little bit of this just so that we experience it. Awesome. All right. Okay. So here goes. Bring the chips. We've got our finished product, right? Um, yes. So what do we call this? What type of hot sauce? It's just a good pepper sauce. It's a good Carolina Reaper pepper sauce. Okay. So Carolina Reaper 
pepper sauce. And yes. we've got our mission chips here. So we're going to actually sample this. And I'm going to take a chip. Give you a chip. And you um, do so the I honors. guess, uh, I guess I, how do I do this, right? You just pour, just, just pour it on it. Make sure that you don't spill any from the top because this may not be fully tight. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just going to actually just uh, take a little bit here. I don't, it may not. Let's, let's see. We'll make it come out. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's on my finger. All right, let me see. Here it goes. That's hot. <laughs> but it's not crying but hot. But it's not crying hot, but I do need some water. <laughs> but um, this is hot. Here you go, Trevor. Thank you very We're much. Prepared. Bon appetit. <laughs> awesome. But it's, it's, it's hot, but it's not super hot. It's, you know, obviously not mild, but definitely excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Did a great job with this. Love it. Thank you. So, uh, Howard, you're going to show us how to make some uh, Mex Mexican-style salsa. And uh, right. so I'm really excited to see what the ingredients are. And then we're going to enjoy the final product. So, uh, all right. So, go ahead. Well, so we're going to be making a traditional Tex-Mex-style salsa. Um, and that uh, salsa will be uh, mostly a tomato base with various hot peppers that we're going to add. Um, some onion, some garlic, and some other seasonings and we're going to blend it all up. So first let's talk about the tomatoes. The first tomato I'm going to cut up here is actually a New Jersey tomato. Mm. And I just bought a couple of these just for variety. And, and then perfect. these are beautiful, beautiful. Um, on the vine, ripen, vine ripened tomatoes. And so we're going to cut up some of these a little bit. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and cut out the little top here. Just a touch. All right, now, you know, it's in interesting to note that you actually grew some of these tomatoes, the smaller yes. tomatoes we're that we have on display here, cherry which tomatoes. we're going to use a few, but you purchased those. Have you ever uh, tried to grow those big tomatoes? Uh, we have. We have had some success with them. Most of them never quite make it to the red stage before the end of the season. <laughs> there you, just, and I wonder why, right? You know, it's New Jersey weather, and maybe we just get a little bit of a late start in yeah. the season. So, and... We're just not that successful with you know, our tomatoes. You know, actually, we're... I started to grow some this summer, and mm -hmm. um, then we had some wild critters that actually came by and, and started to eat some of it. And funny story, that one day, I was actually uh, a couple weeks ago, I was coming out my front door, and there was a green tomato on my front stoop. Wow. So I think a, a, a squirrel now, probably took it, and took just, it was really kind of crazy. You but. think it might have been a chipmunk, though? Uh, maybe, maybe. They, you know, who knows? I think it's the chipmunks that love that, tomatoes. Yeah. We are constantly battling with our family of chipmunks that lives in our area. They seem to have found a good home here. They get lots of tasty treats between our tomatoes and various herbs that we're growing. I think they are well fed. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to cut up a few more of these tomatoes, probably not all of them, just to save a little time. Because we don't really need to make that much salsa. Just a little bit. Awesome. Okay. I think that that's possibly enough tomato for our salsa. This looks good. This is like so healthy. Yes, it's wonderfully healthy. Oh, look at the colors, my gosh. So I'm going to grab this blender here. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this tomatoes into the blender. Nice. Beautiful. And one of the things about salsa though is that you don't wanna blend it too much mm -hmm. because if you blend it too much, it's more soupy and not. Okay. So it should have a, a little bit of a coarser texture. You yes. can actually see the ingredients in yes. there. Yes, much coarser than the texture. Mm -hmm of the hot pepper sauce that I was just making before. Okay. Set this back so what's the next moment. ingredient you're putting in there? Okay, so we've got some onions. These are already chopped up. This okay, is, again, so one tomatoes, whole onions. Dahlia onion for the slight sweetness that we have. And we can just add this right into the mixture. You and actually, probably I, probably, right here. I think yeah. I'm gonna not quite use an entirety of this because I didn't yeah, use all of the tomatoes. Because you made so much the last time, right? Yeah. yeah, but I also didn't use all of the tomatoes this mm -hmm. time. So I'm gonna make a little bit less of the onion in that. I think that's sufficient though. 
You're also putting vinegar this time in, in there yeah, too as well? Yeah, we're going to put okay. just a touch of vinegar okay, in, in the end. Um, but let's continue to cut up the remainder of the vegetables and put the other, other okay, veggies so in there. Okay, so this is um, some green bell pepper. So the sweet, so that's this the one I know that pepper. when I, my mom used to make some real great stuffed peppers, but we're not doing that mm -hmm. in this show today. Yep. Um, and then we're going to add some the red sweet ones. red bell pepper. These yeah. are delicious. These are particularly yes, nice and are. sweet tasting. They add a, a lovely sweetness to the salsa, mm -hmm. which you need. And they also add some nice color, too. Color variety is always good. Yep. And uh, we've got so many ingredients in here, we may have put too much. Uh, I think it's okay. It'll be all right. Because it yeah. once it starts to grind, yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be good. We're not gonna, the, the size of the rest of the ingredients is very, very small from here. So now we're going to add some garlic, nice fresh garlic, and we're going to cut this up a little bit. Again, we don't have to completely, totally cut it, but for this we might have to cut it a little bit more than we did with the hot pepper sauce because we're not going to totally puree this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is probably adequate, just chopped up a little bit. Love it. And I'm using about four cloves of this. It's usually sufficient. You know, some people like a little more garlic, some people like a little less. It's it's a matter of personal taste. I like a lot of garlic in my salsa. I think it's so if you make, can that. you, you can freeze this for, what's the shelf life um, for this I've stuff? I've never tried making? freezing salsa. Mm -hmm. However, I do sometimes freeze the hot pepper sauce that I made before, the um, Carolina yes. Reaper sauce. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how the freshness of the ingredients that you require for salsa is a little bit different when they're not pureed the way the, um, the, the uh, pepper sauce is, hot yeah. pepper mm -hmm. sauce is done. I think it doesn't stay as well in the freezer. It mm -hmm. doesn't work as well. I think it might ice crystallize on the larger chunks. Okay, gotcha. So that would be my guess. I've just never tried it. So I, I think I would probably hesitate to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could be wrong. Awesome. Okay. So this is this is so great. So we're we gonna we're we gonna use any of these cherry peppers, or, or, oh, or we're not? gonna we're gonna use a few more of these little ingredients here. Okay. So one of the yeah. key ingredients here for this salsa is going to be the the hot peppers. So we're gonna use habanero. So that's the habanero. That's the mm -hmm. first one we actually um, we looked at in the garden. Mm -hmm. And now this is not as hot, right? It's hot, not but it's as hot not as, as hot. the Carolina Reaper, mm -hmm. but it is hotter than a jalapeno, mm -hmm. particularly since it's changed color from green to yellowy orange. And again, I've removed the seeds. And I'm gonna cut this up. So I'm actually gonna pick a couple of these cherry cherry uh, tomatoes because I don't want uh, Lori not to, you know, to not be happy because we didn't. She oh, we're gonna great, use, we're definitely using you know, these. They're just a couple great of Great strides to pick those cherries, so. Okay, these are some of our homemade, homegrown rather, um, cherry tomato. And they're really, we have just delicious cherry tomatoes here. There we grow. When the chipmunks don't get them. few more of them. Okay, so habanero peppers so far in here, and just uh, tomatoes, onions, garlic, mm -hmm. uh, bell peppers, yep. red pepper, sweet. We've got a couple of other chilies that we want to throw into the mix here. Okay. This is our fish pepper. Oh, wow. You can you can smell it. I have Real no hot. idea how yeah. hot this one is. It's hot. But it's probably it's fairly hot. hot. My, it's probably... my eyeballs tell me it's hot. It looks like it's probably, it feels like it's a, on the level of a serrano pepper, which is a little hotter than a jalapeno, but not as hot yeah, as a it. habanero, or nowhere near as hot Sorry. as the, um, uh, ghost, uh, as the uh, Carolina Reaper. This is our Cajun Bell. Again, this is a, a, a pretty mildly hot pepper, although it is in a red stage, so in its reddest stage, it will be a little bit hotter than... Um, you know, the green stage. So it's nowhere near as hot even as a jalapeno, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And then we have our jalapenos. And I think we probably don't need to use both of these jalapenos. I think one is good, one yeah, because we have a so lot. So we're gonna just use one yeah, jalapeno. And we're gonna cut this up a little bit. Awesome. Cut off the, that part there. Jalapeno, everybody, right? We, we, we probably know this more than anything Some else, seeds. especially next to our bell peppers, right? This is a jalapeno. Yep. That's what it looks like. Cut a little bit of this up. Yep. Nice 
So I'm going to pour a little bit of cumin in. So where do you Excuse where me. do you actually purchase these? I mean, um, you said you buy them online. Um, I did buy the um, uh, ghost pepper online, and the fish pepper came as a sort of freebie, okay. as I mentioned before, yes. um, uh, when the ghost pepper arrived too small. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and it is. We're going to add just a little bit of salt. And I, I, otherwise I buy them at local garden local centers. Local garden centers, yeah. Now we didn't put any of this in here. No, Are we going to do? Oh, we're going to do We that may too. have to grind this down First, a little bit okay, before good. we put that in, just because awesome. it will get much smaller because the tomatoes yes. are really taking up a lot of room yes. in here right oh, now. This is so good. Uh, let me finish adding the Smells seasonings so that we great. need so that at least. We have mm -hmm. all of that in place. Let's see, we've vinegar, got... Vinegar, are we gonna... Uh, we are gonna put a touch of vinegar in there. Mm -hmm. Just pour a little bit, just adds a little bit of zing you to it. You smell the aroma, it's, it's, it's really incredible, guys. Mm -hmm. Really amazing. And then we're gonna add just a touch of olive oil. Not much. Wow. wow. Just adds a kind of richness to it. These ingredients just get me excited because they're natural mm -hmm. and um, they're healthy. Yeah, right. totally healthy. So Lots anything of that's, that's, C that's in uh, grown in the ground yeah. is good for your body. So, yep. so um, I'm going to go ahead and just drop that back on here. And come around here this side a little bit. And uh, we'll stick the lid on this. And okay, awesome. swish it down a little bit. And here, in this case, we're not going to, we're going to put it on a lower setting. Let's make sure that, let's see if this goes low. Okay, it's on a pretty low setting. And um, we'll put this on the pulse setting here. So we can control it. Look at that. You see, it's, it's getting much wow, smaller now. Look see, at that. Little by little, awesome. we just bring it down in size. It'll give us room to throw the rest of the ingredients in. Great. So, awesome. so now there's room in there for plenty of room for our final ingredient, which is going to be some delicious fresh cilantro. Wow. This is a, one of the so most cut the important edge, right? there you go. Um, herbs that you can use in cooking. Any kind of Mexican food. Amazing. Uh, I always love to use cilantro. Yes. And then we can just take some of this and yeah. chop it up. You can never put too much cilantro mm -hmm. in it. It just adds a marvelous richness mm -hmm. to this flavor. You know, you know what's really amazing about just today's show? We've talked about just where all these ingredients have come from. And, Mexico and you know the Midwest and mm -hmm. you you know you you're purchasing some of these things online it's just goes to show that the diversity in our world and the cultural diversity it makes it richer right than anything else and that's exciting absolutely right so um, the one final ingredient that we have here that we're going to use is a little bit of lime juice so I'm going to cut a bit off here and cut a piece of lime out of this Nice fresh green lime. Lime. Just going to squeeze a little bit of lime juice. Bring a little acidity, there. right? To yeah. um, really and nice balance everything. Nice citrusy quality there you to go. it too, which is really important, I think, for a good salsa to have a nice. little bit of a citrusy quality to it. I'll squeeze it nice and good here, using all my strength to squeeze out as much as I can of the juice. That's perfect Great. now. Beautiful. All right. So I'm going to come all back right. around come here around. again. Awesome. And we will. Blend this a little bit further. Great, man, I can't wait to taste this. I know it's gonna be good. That should be good now. Awesome. All right, we now Let's have some here. delicious salsa. All right, so now what we're awesome. going to do is we're going to find ourselves a little bowl for this. In there? That's got some tomato oh, okay. stems in here. Let's just oh, yeah, we don't want that. Get rid of that. It's just perfectly good, but it's awesome. just tomato stems. So let's pour this into a nice bowl here. Dude, man, unbelievable. Big bowl of salsa ready to right be there? enjoyed with chips. Look at that. It should be a little hot, but maybe not salsa. too hot. Go ahead, do the honor, <laughs> right. Trevor. Take awesome, the first man. Taste. Here we go. Here we go. I will be happy to do that. Let's see. So good. 
Now I'm going to try a little bit. So I haven't good. tried it. I hope I didn't make it too hot. It's hot, but it's not too hot. You can taste the um, all the ingredients, the cilantro. Mm. Oh, it's, yeah. just, it's so good. Turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. Good job. A little hot, not too hot. I like this. Very good. Excellent job. So, you know, you can you, you can make this some more for me, right? <laughs> we can make this anytime you want. You can come over, Trevor, Excellent. and we'll be happy to make you a delicious hot sauce. Thank you so Traditional much. Traditional Mexican Tex-Mex style salsa. There you go. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate and enjoy the rest of your um, summer. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you.